and welcome back to Authentic on Air with Bruce Alexander. I am your host, Bruce Alexander. Welcome to the Thunderdome. This is my studio for the time being in the basement of my aunt-in-law's uh, home. It's a beautiful cabin, but this is my tiny corner of it, and I'm not loving the studio setup. It's a good thing, though. This is uncomfortable. It is, I'm in a state of discomfort being in this place that is not my own. Why is that good? Discomfort is the phase before growth. In order to get the thing, you have to be uncomfortable for a while. And right now, the thing is the place where my family belongs. So this has been a great experience of getting to know my aunt-in-law and her, you know, her children and her husband well. Like, loved it. Really have. You know, excited to spend a little bit more time here, but it is just uncomfortable enough to make sure that we are really out looking for houses or we're really ready to pounce on the opportunity whenever God provides for us. So anyways, um, today I want to talk about the burden of leadership. If you must be a fool if you sign up on purpose to lead people because you are just begging to disappoint them. That's me. Put my hand up. I, I want to lead people. And I want to talk about that some today. Um, first, let's catch up. Body. Um, so out here in the sticks, in this cabin that we're staying at, there's a, you know, like a Rocky style workout barn. I got going out or going on right now. Some really old school weights, heavy enough to, to feel like I'm doing something real again, um, but not too crazy to where I can injure myself. So I've been doing a little bit of lifting and you know, keeping the walking going. And I feel, I feel old as shit. Like, I'm not going to lie, but I start, I'm starting to feel like brief moments of power and that feels good. I, I forgot how good it feels to feel powerful. And, you know, I'm excited that, that helps propel me forward to keep doing this stuff because honestly, sometimes it doesn't feel great, but feeling that brief moment, is helping make it all worth it. And then seeing the incremental improvements, like being really present in the facts of today and seeing that there are things that are going right. It is hard not to still look at myself and see the body that I hate, but the body that I hate is still better than the body it was two months ago. So it's not the body I want, but it's better. And I have to keep digging in on that and keep working on that. Um, my being, my relationship with God is getting better and better. I'm, you know, I'm stacking daily. I'm praying more consistently. I'm having open conversations with God and I'm starting to bring my family into that more. Today was the first time I prayed over my wife and I was really, really nervous to do that, but she was struggling. And I felt like my lack of spiritual leadership was doing her a massive disservice. So I needed to step up and help provide some clarity for her and show her my faith in, in action. And it was a really positive result. So that's great. Um, that also goes into my balance. My relationship with Kate is, you know, it's still tumultuous at times. There is still a lot of trauma that I have inflicted upon her that has to be undone, but the healing is well underway. We've made it across the country. We're now in Auburn, New York, and she did a lot of things that she has said, I can't to get us here. Like her growth throughout this trip has been phenomenal. And I've been really appreciative of that. I've been, you know, really supportive of her along the way. And that has been my goal. So I'm really um, excited about having stuck to that goal and have maintained support for her. Um, so it's balance. Business, business has been, man, business has been kind of weird. Um, I kind of had, I've had a couple of false flags recently one thinking that there was some some drama coming my way that didn't actually exist it was my own stories getting in the way of like progress with one of my clients and i stacked that worked through it showed up in truth and we had a really really great session that produced some really great growth for my client so i was like okay that's great that's what happens whenever you you face facts and live in truth is that you are able to take those things that are scaring you those anxieties and you're able to turn them on their head and actually use them to provide growth. And that's what happened with her. But then on the other side, I had another client who I thought I was making really great progress with and come to find out like, you know, the basis of everything that we do is tell the truth, live by the code, stop fucking lying. And meanwhile, 
where every time I'd ask him about his finances, you know, how are things going? You know, the things that we've worked on, are, is the money starting to come in? He's like, yeah, things are improving. Things are going pretty well. Come to find out his card has been declined for the last uh, month and a half of sessions. Now, that's my fault for not being on top of my finances. And that's something that I'm glad I got exposed now why I don't have that many clients. Because if I had 15 clients and four of them weren't paying and I wasn't on top of that, that's a lot of money I'm losing out on. I still lost out on a lot of money and I hope that he's going to pay me back. But if if he doesn't, that's an expensive lesson still. But I take responsibility for that. But I'm more upset, not about the money, but about the fact that I thought that we had we had this special bond of truth that we were sharing and he was growing and starting to implement these things in his life, knowing that this big lie has been out there for, you know, pretty much uh, six out of the 10 weeks that we've been seeing, you know, that we've been in sessions together makes me question all the work that we've done together. And that makes me really sad for him and for his family. Like I was that work, was about him getting closer to his wife, him getting closer to his children. That's important work. But if it's based on a foundation of lies, everything that he's done you know, is probably going to fall apart because now he, he has no foundation of truth to move forward with without me. And like, I'm not kicking him to the curb, but you know, he's said now that I called him when I was like, oh man, I, I see that your card has been declined for the last two monthly payments. Like, we have to get this figured out before we move forward. And he's like, yeah, you know, just do a financial hardship. I'm not going to be able to continue. It's like, that's rough. I understand why it's, it feels like a luxury to pay in personal investment, but the uh, amount of money that he has increased since we started working together pays for me easily. So it was worth it at least for that. And the amount of, depth in his relationship that he's gained is just, you know, it's just icing on the cake, but people don't look at that. They look at that one payment and what am I, what am I doing today versus looking at how our collision has changed the trajectory of their life forever. And if he was actually living in the truth, he would see that, but he's not. And I don't know what level he is. And, you know, I have to take, responsibility for that as well because if i had been digging deeper with him in sessions and then with my own finances i would have seen that and that would have been a collision that we could have had and that goes into the leadership part we'll talk about that again in a minute as well so that's body being balance and business all taken care of that's caught up we are in auburn new york the journey is going well i've announced to kate that i think that we're going to find a house this week um i'm announcing it to everybody who listens now all 10 of you that I think it is our house is going to appear for us very, very soon. And this is not our, our you know, forever home or anything, but this is our next, um, like our, our next place to stage for the next month or two to find the place where we move all of our stuff up for. So I think that, that we're going to find that the next seven days that has been put placed on my heart and I'm announcing it. I'm, I'm believing it's already happened. I, I believe that's what God has for us. And I'm just acting in faith. Like that's what this is all about. And it's scary and it feels kind of goofy, but at the same time, it also removes a lot of anxiety from my heart. So just talk about it. So anyways, that's all the catch up stuff. I wanted to talk about leadership because this, this keeps coming across my, uh, my plate. You know, there's, you really have to be a special kind of nut to want to actively sign up to be a leader, not only in your family, but in your workspace, in your career, and then to try to be a leader of a movement on social media, it's nuts. Like, I don't know what I'm thinking, but at the same time, I also know that I've been called. Like there is a, a voice inside of me that says, you have to do this. Whenever I'm not doing it, I don't feel right. I feel off. Whenever I'm doing it, and I'm doing it well whenever I'm, I've done all the stuff I need to do to show up as my strongest self and I go into that leadership position, then it feels amazing. It feels powerful and it feels like where I belong. But it is a process of doing all the small things right, showing up consistently for myself to then be the leader that is needed. That's a lot. It is a heavy burden. And then on top of that, that's all the stuff I have to do to prepare myself. 
there are a lot of people who are not ready to be led because they don't live in truth and they're not willing to look at the truth. And a lot of them attack me on social media. They come at my physical appearance. They see, you know, on TikTok, dude, I have a guy who is just trolling me for days on end, like 30 comments of nobody wants to, nobody wants to watch your videos. You should just quit. Like, I don't know. Maybe he said kill yourself. I don't know. It was pretty bad. But like, I, I know that whenever you have God's urging, like the calling to support you, what some no name, no posting person says has no effect on me. Like it is, I'm, I'm not going to say no effect. Briefly, it does hurt. Like I'm a human being, obviously. But then whenever I think about what I'm doing this for and all the people who are hurting, who need somebody like me to help them out of the pit of their darkness, I'm like, fuck that guy. He's, you know, not only is he any like just as broken as I am, he is more so broken and he's so far behind the curve because he's not even looking at what's wrong with him. He thinks that it's me. He has no idea how broken he is. And that's, that's, that's sad for him. Like, so I'm not going to let that person sway how I feel about myself. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to get down and disappointed and depressed in my, in my own actions, because I, that happens. Being a leader does not mean that you never feel sad or you never feel like not leading. It means that you do it anyways. It means that you continue to step up to the plate and try your damnedest to lead the people you are trying to shepherd to the promised land, wherever that is. I want to lead ADHD parents to trust the, their inner voice again. I want them to learn to silence that inner critic, except for when it's useful for them, and learn to hear their inner voice and to move with purpose and passion to do things that actually fill them for their lives instead of them following the neurotypical standard, the status quo, and doing things that, that make them feel a little crazy every single day. It's, it's a terrible life to lead. It is, and it, and what's, what's the worst part about it is it's so easy to embrace comfort as the, like the panacea for all your problems. Like, well, at least I don't, at least I'm not broke. Sometimes like, Honestly, not bringing in that much money right now is so much better than showing up to work and having to be a slave to a system for people who hate me. They hate, they hate everything about me. They don't understand how I think, work, act, or anything, and they don't care to because I'm not like them. People don't like different. Like as much as money, as much as people try to protest and say different, very few people in the mainstream work culture care for different they would much rather just make you act like them and if you can't they would want they want to put you on the outside i could never do that again it would like it would it would rot me from the inside out once you see what it's like on the other side to invest in yourself and really try to do something important for the people who are counting on you it's game changer. Like I, I couldn't go back. So that's that. That is one kind of the burden of leadership is just the knowing that that you have to do it because going back to doing something else is it's not possible. Another burden is like leading in your family is knowing that if you don't do it, the likelihood of no of anybody else doing it is is almost nil. And then if they do do it you're going to feel like shit because whenever you are called to be the leader of your family, you know it like whether you acknowledge it or not, you know. And so for in my, a couple of times in my life, whenever it's somebody else has stepped up, my oldest daughter has been one who has had to be the person who's led in situations because neither of us adults were doing it. That feels terrible. My wife does not want to be the leader. She wants, she wants to be my partner and me be the vision maker and the decider of the big things. But I have not done that in many situations. So now whenever I try to do it, she, she doesn't trust me. It's like, you know, uh, muscle memory for her to like tense against my leadership because she's so used to having to carry the load of 
I'm really just a void of leadership. Like she has admitted herself, you know, pretty openly that she is not good at leading in that state. She's just, there's too much fear for her. She needs certainty. And I'm good at providing that whenever I'm doing, once again, doing all the small things to show up in a place of power. But not only do I have to provide certainty at this point, I have to be just impossibly, not impossibly, I want to like just hyper consistent because I've done so much damage. There's, you know, 12 plus years of being a bad uh, husband and boyfriend that I have to undo and be consistent on for her to trust my leadership. That is a big burden. But I accept it. I want it. I desire to lead this family. Not only do I desire to lead this family, I desire to lead my clients. And leading clients is, I don't know, it's its both better and worse as far as the burden goes because clients, you, you get them for a session, you give them the homework, things to do, to take with them, but you're, the pressure is not on for you to lead your clients all the time. You need to show up in the time that you have shared together and be the best version of yourself, be able to hold space for them so they can have clarity and confidence moving forward in their decisions. That's all great. But the problem with that is you also only have that session together to reinforce those things. With my family, like I, they, they see me doing the things day in and day out, over and over and over, showing up, working out, doing my, uh, my daily writing, stacking every day, praying every day. They see me doing it over and over and over again. And they see the difference in me. My clients see me once a week. My longest, uh, my longest standing client, he's seen the difference in me, but he's known me the longest. So he knows that it works. So that gives him some buy-in. But still, we only have one day a week in order for me to impress upon him how to implement that into his life. And that's hard. And there's, you carry the burden of wanting this person to succeed. And there's a lot of personal responsibility in that. And then also in that, you have to be willing to go into their darkest space with them so that they can grow. If you're not willing to talk about the hard, dark stuff, then they're not going to be able to move past it because that's why they have a coach is because they haven't been able to move past it. And so like, yeah, that's, that's it. I want to keep it under 20 minutes now. Um, I'm just going to end under 20 minutes because I don't want to commit so much time to this at this moment on this, during this move, I just want to make sure I'm getting a podcast episode done. I'm talking about things that are important to me and I'm engaging with the, you know, the few of you who are still listening as I've pivoted this show. And if you're still listening, thank you so much. And if you are wanting to find out more about living your impulsive life, I would love to hear from you. You can contact me. You can still email me at bruce at authenticidentitymanagement.com. I haven't said that in a while. But also, you can set up a free consultation where I will provide you with at least three, at least three techniques or strategies to start to uncover the impulsive need. That means releasing the fear, regret, guilt, shame, and all that stuff that is almost inherent with being an ADHD adult. You've lived a hard life and you need some help uncovering what you are actually supposed to be doing. And I would love to help you with that. You can go to www.impulsive.life forward slash consult for a free consultation. And I would love to do that with you. Until next week, I'll talk to you then. Goodbye, everybody.